Hey guys, what's up? I hope you're keeping well and this is Bryn from the Darts Class. We've got a new video today and we're going to explore some bad bits of advice I hear quite often um, and what you should do when you hear those bits of advice um, and how you can improve on the advice that people give you. Now, I'm going to preface this video by saying that all of the advice that I'm going to um, label as bad advice, um, it all comes from a good place. Whether it's somebody commenting on a Facebook group or somebody in the pub, um, the majority of people are trying to be supportive. In fact, no, everyone's trying to be supportive. Um, I don't know anyone who's trying to give someone um, purposefully bad advice to not improve their darts game. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's some that just defy logic. That doesn't make sense. Um, and there's some that just take a little bit more of consideration and some that can really just mess with your way of thinking. They might actually be good bits of advice, um, but if you let them infiltrate your way of thinking, your own interpretation on how you should be playing the game, um, it can just get you confused and get you throwing some bad darts. So um, that's what I'm saying um, about that at this point. Then it's not necessarily bad advice, um, it's coming from a good place, but there are certainly things um, that you should avoid taking on board if it's going to affect your own game. So the first one I hear a lot is this one. I'm really struggling with my throat at the moment. Have you got any technical tips you can give me to improve? Yeah, just just throw naturally. What do you mean? What whatever's comfortable, and just keep doing it until it works. Well, I'm most comfortable. W whatever's most comfortable. Okay, um, I guess that's most comfortable. Just keep do okay. Keep doing that until I figure it out. Cool. Thanks. Now I understand what people mean when they're saying throw naturally. They mean throw with um, a relaxed rhythm, throw whatever's the most comfortable for you. And there's a lot of that bit of advice you should take on board, but please don't take it too literally. Um, if you don't apply any technique, then you've got no chance. It's like, a, I keep referring to other sports, but if you play golf or if you play cricket or tennis and somebody just says, oh, just serve it naturally or pick up a guitar, then just play it naturally, it's not gonna work. There is some basic techniques that you need to get into your game, which you can build your natural ability, your natural flair and natural style around. But there's a couple of things that you need to do to um, ensure that you've got a solid foundation of technique. Now this one just doesn't make any sense. Go on now, Bryn, you know what to do. One up, one in. You hear this a lot. Again, it's not meant to be bad advice, but telling anyone to not aim at the target is ludicrous. Um, the advice I would give it some, somebody in this situation on double one is aim at the top wire. And I don't mean on over the top of it, at the top wire. You want to clip it and go in, but if you're going to err, uh, then sure, go high. But the big mistake, in the, the biggest problem I've got with this piece of advice is they're telling you to miss the board. Um, you've got to go at it, you've got to believe you can hit that double, you've got to be aggressive. Sure, if you're going to make a mistake, make sure you're making that mistake high. But one up, one in, it makes no sense. Go for the double, aim for the top of the double, sure, but don't aim outside of the board. Okay, this one I really hate. I've got a problem with this one. Um, you might have seen a video I've done recently on how to use a lie and how to use a marker. Um, I see a lot of people asking about their throw, how they can improve it on Facebook groups. I hear it in the pub. Um, and this comment comes up so often and it infuriates me. Yeah, you're quite consistent, but you need to work on your group in a bit. Just wherever that first start goes, throw another two at it. Keep doing that. If you can put three in the same place, you're not gonna go far wrong. Literally, wherever it goes. Okay. People say, throw your dart, and wherever that first dart goes, try and hit it with the next two. Now, that's great if you're hitting a treble 20, or if you're hitting a 20, or if you're aiming at a double and you're next to the double, sure. But, if you throw your first dart and it's crap, there's no good 
grouping them in the small 12s if you're aiming at treble 20. When you hit a small 12, the thing you should be practicing is how to switch back and make that readjustment from the small 12 up to the treble 20, or if you've hit a small 5 and you're blocking the treble 20, down to treble 19s. You can be the best small 12 hitter in the world, but you're not going to be a world champion. You're training small, fine muscles to hit a specific target. If you're in the 20s and you're just learning how to score steadily or you're aiming at a double and you're just over the wire, um, sure, that bit of advice is fine, but don't just throw a dart and aim at it because there is no point in practicing how to throw um, a bad dart three times in a row. You're just reinforcing a bad throw. If you throw that first dart and it's bad, then that's really the time you should be focusing the most on how to make that readjustment back to the treble or back to your original target. And this last one isn't necessarily a bad bit of advice, but it can really mess with your mind. If it's not too serious, it's what's called weak brain. If it's slightly worrying, it's called thoughtless sallies. And if it's a nightmare and you can forget about him, it's brain scramblies. And I'm talking about the routes that people advise you to go in the pub or um, at a match uh, that contradict what you've already got in your brain. 92 left, you know the way to go, Bunny. Come on. Treble 20, double 16. If you miss it, two double 18s. Come on now, this is your chance. 92, you know the way to go. 25 first start, give yourself a shot at the ball. told you you should have gone 25 first start. Now these people are trying to be helpful, they're trying to give you the best opportunity to win that leg of darts and I get that, it's coming from a good place and for young inexperienced players, players who don't necessarily know their numbers very well, um, then that makes sense and in those scenarios, fine. I'm all for people giving people advice on checkout routes if they have no idea. However, I'm an experienced Super League player and this one gets in my head all the time. Um, so the example that I've done there is 92. Now, sometimes the, um, the bit of advice that I'm calling bad advice is good advice there. Um, if somebody's sat on double top for the match and I've got 92 left, I probably am gonna go that bull route first, guarantee myself a shot at the bull. Um, I'm also good at maths, and my throw is quite rhythmical, but it's also a bit methodic, so I don't mind if I miss that 25, having to take a moment and figure out where I've got to go next. Um, but that can scramble some people's minds and completely put off their rhythm. But for 92, I know I'm a really good double 18 hitter, and I'm pretty good on the treble 20s. So I'm confident that I'm gonna hit that first one on the treble 20. And then if I miss, I've got two, a two double out shot, um, and I'm confident that that's where I'm gonna go. The time when this is a bad bit of advice is purely when you have your own mind made up. Don't put any doubt in your own mind. What do they say to professional footballers when they take a penalty? They say, don't change your mind. Pick a corner, pick where you're gonna put it, put the ball on the spot, hit it. The same goes here for darts. You take those darts out of the board and you need um, a 82 left, a 92 left, a uh, 125 left. If you know the way that you go, that you're the most confident, that is the most likely way you're gonna check it out. There is so much about positive mental attitude that goes into darts. Your own confidence, your own belief in your ability to hit what you're going for. If you change your strategy and you're going in and out um, from going this way and that way, it can damage your rhythm, it can damage your focus. The worst case scenario for me in that situation would be um, to change my mind, go for the 25 and miss the 25. Then. Well, I've got two darts still to save the turn, all I'm thinking about is, why didn't I just go to the trouble 20? That's what I was always gonna go for. I'm in a negative mental attitude. My chance of hitting the shot are massively reduced. I've got to rely on bailing myself out here. Whereas if I stick to my guns, stick to my original process of thought and my original shot process, if I'd have gone single 20, then single 18, single 18, and I don't get a shot at tops, that's my own fault, I can live with that. I don't want to be thinking, should have gone that way, shouldn't have listened to you, mate, um, and scramble my brain.
So those are some bits of bad advice that I hear quite often. They're not necessarily bad bits of advice. Um, they just can be bad bits of advice if you learn, um, if you don't learn when to listen to them. Um, so stick with what your main thought process is. Um, if you're doing something that's obviously wrong, soon enough you're gonna listen to it because enough people will tell you why you're going that route, what are you doing? Um, but essentially do what you feel most confident in and you will see the best return for your efforts. Let me know in the comments if you hear um, any bits of bad advice regularly um, or if you think that I'm talking a load of uh, rubbish here and all of that stuff I've labelled as bad advice is actually brilliant advice and you listen to it every time. Um, I'm quite open to have some criticism and some discussion um, but just let me know. Um, otherwise, if you've watched this far, make sure you like and subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you the next time on The Darts Class. Because he's got the brain scramblies.